This is why men love hoes. We're gonna watch a viral video on my TikTok page that has 2.6 million views currently, and then we're gonna break down the analogies and the reasoning behind why men love hoes. This is why men love hoes. Don't listen to this if you don't wanna know how guys actually think. I want you to imagine you wake up from a nap at 8 p.m., like out of a deep sleep, and you're just wiping crust out of your eyes, and suddenly you realize that you're starving, like, starving, the hungriest you've ever been. You need something to eat ASAP. So you run downstairs to your kitchen and you realize there is no food in your fridge, like nothing to eat. So you decide to yourself that you're gonna hop in your car and go grab something to eat. When you hop in your car, you take with you $100 cash. So you've got $100 cash to go spend to eat anywhere. But remember, you're starving, like you need food now. It's 8 p.m. at night, so you've got a lot of different options to choose from. But for the sake of this example, let's narrow it down to two options. Tonight, you can either go to the McDonald's right across the street, which is a two minute drive. You can go through the drive through and have your food in less than 10 minutes. Or you can get in your car and drive an hour away to a five star restaurant that has great food, amazing food, satiating food, the best food you've ever had, but it's an hour away. And it's not just that it's an hour drive away and you're starving, but it also requires you to dress up. It requires you to get a reservation. You gotta look nice. You gotta take a shower. You gotta do all these extra things to show up at the five-star restaurant. Even though you have the money, even though you have the ability to go to the five-star restaurant, because you're hungry and McDonald's is close and convenient, you go to McDonald's. 99 times out of 100, you're gonna choose McDonald's just because of the convenience alone. That doesn't mean that there isn't a time and place for the five-star restaurant. All it means is that when it is time for the five-star restaurant, it will have been a day you planned, been a day that's been on your schedule for days, if not weeks, and it will be something you prepare for both mentally and physically. And when you go to that five-star restaurant, you will present the best version of yourself at that five-star restaurant. You don't care what you look like going to McDonald's. You don't care what you smell like. You don't care if your teeth are brushed. You don't care if there's crust in your eyes. You go into McDonald's because it's just about the food and then it's over. Hoes or McDonald's? His future wife is the five-star restaurant. Now that we've watched the video together, I want to break down a couple things in the video uh, so that we can all get a clear understanding of like the meanings behind everything that's going on. Cause I know the first time you watch it, it could be a little bit confusing. So we're gonna start off here in, uh, we'll call it the classroom here, the Players Club classroom. And we're just gonna write down a few different uh, themes, right? And so one of the themes is gonna be McDonald's and we're gonna have five star restaurant. Oh, I put percent restaurant, five star restaurant. Uh, we're gonna have another one that says hunger. And uh, then we'll make another one that says um, convenience. Okay? So these are our five points, right, that we're gonna be discussing. And each one of these points is serving under the basis, let me put some space here, of an analogy. Okay, so we have our analogy, right? For those of you who don't know what an analogy is, I'm gonna uh, search up the definition for us right now so we can all be of the same understanding. So an analogy, a comparison between two things typically for the purpose of explanation or clarification, um, right? So just so that we're all on, on, on the same understanding of an analogy, I wanted to get that clear because an analogy is what I use in the video in order to describe um, the thought process in which men go to when they're deciding how to categorize women and you know why they end up choosing hoes a lot of the time, right? Because I know that that can be confusing for women why you know there's quote unquote so much more high quality women out there or women that aren't easy but it seems like the women that aren't easy don't get chosen as often or get as much attention as the hoes, quote unquote. Now, I'm not here to describe to you the definition of a hoe. You can leave that up to your own imagination, what you think a hoe is, 
but because that's not the point of the analogy. The point of the analogy and the point of this breakdown is so that we can understand the thought process in just kind of more than just the analogy, right? So first we have McDonald's, we have the five-star restaurant, we have hunger, and we have convenience, right? I'm actually going to replace, I'm going to put hunger first, just because I think hunger is the first basis in which we have to come to an understanding of what hunger represents, and then we can get to the other um, aspects of the analogy, right? So first we have hunger. Now, what does hunger represent in the analogy, okay? Hunger represents, let's put, let's put some bullet points here. Hunger represents a man's need for sex, okay? So this is what hunger is representing in the analogy. Now, some of you might say, okay, well, you know, uh, hunger and, you know, being hungry and starvation is very different from, you know, just being horny, right? Of course, if you don't eat, like in the analogy, you're going to starve to death eventually. But if you're just horny, that doesn't necessarily mean you won't survive. You're much, very capable of surviving if you stay horny for the rest of your life. Yes, that is true. And I can see why that would create confusion in the analogy. However, right, the analogy um, of hung using hunger as a representation for horniness is meant to represent to women, right, because this analogy is meant for women to get a better understanding of how men think, is meant for women to get a better understanding of how important sex is to a man. Now, I'm not saying that sex is everything to a man. I'm not saying that sex will, a man will literally die without sex. It's very obvious. Men won't die just because they don't have sex. Excuse me. But what I'm trying, the point that I'm trying to get across is how much men are motivated by sex. And it's very un, uh, important to understand how uh, much of a motivating factor sex is for a man, because if you don't understand that, you won't understand the drive to pick hoes in the first place, if that makes any sense, right? So I use the analogy of hunger representing um, a man's need for sex so that you can understand it's not life or death, but it is very important, right? A lazy man will drive three hours just for the opportunity of sex. When we talk about, I don't want to say the word, but if I talk about, you know, a man paying for time with a woman just so he can maybe explore the opportunity of possibly things going further, right? You know exactly what I'm talking about. I don't even have to say the name, right? But what is he paying for? He's paying for the companionship and the opportunity that things might escalate. He's not even paying for things to actually escalate. He's just paying that in the pot, in the in the span of you guys hanging out, there's a possibility things might escalate further, right? And just that alone, just the possibility of sex is enough to motivate a man to come out of his wallet. Imagine that. So I just want you to understand how extreme it is for men, you know what I mean? And how much of a motivating factor that can be, which is why I use uh, hunger as a representation for sex. In the analogy, the hunger is what, the hunger or the horniness is what makes the man get up and be like, all right, I need to satisfy myself, right? I need to fill my belly, right? I need to satisfy my urges, right? And it's that important that it would motivate him to get up out of bed and search, you know, on how he's going to satisfy himself. So hunger is representing sex. The next point we have here is McDonald's, right? And in McDonald's, right, we have, let's see here, representing McDonald's, right, we have hosts or women who are easily accessible, right? McDonald's also represents something quick without much work, okay? In this analogy, McDonald's also represents um, uh, little to no effort for the desired result, right? 
So I put down these three points for McDonald's, right? You've got hoes or women who are easily accessible, something quick without much work, little to no effort for the desired result. What have we established that the desired result is? The desired result is sexual satisfaction. In this case, hunger, right? And in order to get sexual satisfaction, you need to get up and go get something to eat. So we have our two options here, which are McDonald's, and then the five-star restaurant we'll get to. But right now we have McDonald's. McDonald's is representing the hose, right? Quote, unquote. And the hose is someone, right, in this case, that is easily accessible, that you can gain as a man sexual access to without much work or effort, right? I.e., you don't got to take them on dates. You don't got to be nice to them that much. You don't got to text them that much. It takes very little maintenance to get ac sexual access to the hoe or McDonald's, right? And because there is uh, such a low barrier of entry, right, it creates convenience, which we'll get to. We'll get to that, right? But because of the low barrier of entry, it creates convenience, which will sway our decision as a male in the thought process one way or another, depending on how convenient or inconvenient the, the choices are for us, right? And understand that in this analogy, right, of course, in real life, there would be a broad spectrum of choices. Just like in an analogy like this, it's not like you would wake up at 8 p.m. and the only option for you on a restaurant would be a McDonald's meal or a five-star restaurant. Of course, that's extreme, but the purpose of the analogy is meant to be simplistic so that you don't get bogged down by all the different options and price ranges and value menu meals and this and that. It's simplistic for a reason so that we can all follow the purpose and the message behind the analogy. So we have McDonald's as like the really, really low barrier of entry there that, that can give us the desired result, which is sexual satisfaction. Now we uh, get to um, the five-star restaurant, okay? So in the five-star restaurant, these are kind of the things the five-star represent, our star represent, uh, five-star represent a star restaurant is representing, okay? So we have women who are high quality, right? And will, are hard to access. What do I mean by hard to access? I'll explain that in a second. They, it also represents a woman with high standards. Right? It also represents to get here, I must put in a lot of effort and consistency. Right? So, to get here, to get to the five star represent to the five star restaurant, we must put in a lot of effort and consistency. It's not just a wake up, I'm hungry, I go to a five star restaurant, right? You're gonna have to book a reservation. You're gonna have to get ready. You want to look nice. You know what I mean? You're gonna have to plan it out. It's not just a wake up and go to a five star restaurant whenever you feel like it, because the five star restaurant is always booked, right? Think I can add that always booked or plenty of competition, right? That's important. That's going to be very important, right? Because competition is going to sway our decision. If we know that to get our satisfied, our desired result, right? One choice is going to have a lot of competition, meaning we're going to have to put our best foot forward. And another choice, while still might having a lot of competition, right? It's not necessarily competition if the barrier of entry is so low, right? Because if, let's say, for example, if a college is accepting everyone, right, but a lot of people apply, you're not really competing with anyone, even though a lot of people apply because everyone gets in. Now, if a college is accepting a very little amount of people, but they accept an even smaller amount, now you have competition, right? So competition is only based around how hard is it to actually get the desired result or get into wherever it is you're trying to go. And in this case, we know where we're trying to go, okay? So we have the five-star uh, restaurant representing women who have a 
are high quality and are hard to access and a woman with high standards and to get here, you must put in a lot of effort and consistency, right? You can't just wake up and get there, right? Women with high quality, high quality meaning, okay, they're beautiful, they're intelligent, right? You know, a lot of men desire them. They have really good qualities. They, they, they're they healed. They, they bring you peace, right? All of this type of stuff that you would want in, let's say, a wife. I'll add that wifey type of personality, right? Someone that can take care of you, someone you would want to bring home to your mother, someone who you can make the, 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 the mother of your children, right? Or you would want to, you'd be proud of, you know what I mean? That's what the five-star uh, restaurant is representing in uh, this analogy. Then we have convenience, okay? Now, this is a very interesting one, right? We have convenience here, and what is convenience representing inside uh, our analogy? Convenience is representing my desire to work hard for a result, right? Convenience is also representing how do my options compare and contrast with my, let's say, mindset at the time, right? <clears throat> now, the, my, desire, uh, my desire to work for a hard result, right? That's understood as, well, okay, McDonald's and a five-star restaurant, which one, right, is going to give me the, uh, the, the most convenience, which one's going to be the easiest for the desired result. And, right, I'm also deciding, do I even want to work hard for the desired result? Because just because you're hungry, that doesn't necessarily mean you're, you might not be hungry enough to go on a five-mile run for food, right? But if you're starving, you might be on a, hungry enough to go on a five-mile run for food, you see? So kind of the, the hunger or the horniness, right, is going to uh, change how willing am I to work hard for what it is that I'm, I, I want, for the, the result that I want, right? And in this case, we're looking for convenience just to solve our hunger or our horniness. And so we get to how do my options compare and contrast with my mindset at the time? Why do I put that one? Because in terms of convenience, right, you want to know, right, because depending on where the man is in his life, and his thought process and what he's thinking about and where he wants to be, right? Depending on how mature he is at the time, he might not be looking for a McDonald's at the time. Do you understand what I mean? His hunger, his hunger, right? His need for sex might not necessarily be satisfied by a hoe that he knows he doesn't have a connection with, depending on his mindset or where he's at in his life. His hunger might be satisfied better by a five-star restaurant that he can continue coming back to. Do you understand what I'm saying? Or a high-quality woman that gives him the sexual gratification, but also the good feelings of love and connection along with the sexual gratification, right? The man might be at a point where he no longer desires, quote-unquote, junk food, because junk food, he, know, he understands that junk food doesn't do a good job of satiating him, doesn't give him the nutrients that he needs, and is not conducive to the lifestyle he's trying to live at the time. So your, how do my options compare and contrast with my mindset at the time is, is going to drastically change the, the decision that you make. Just like much, much uh, like in the analogy, if, um, if I'm hungry, right, but, you know, I'm hungry, but I'm also, let's say, overweight, right? And I want to have a healthy lifestyle. Even if McDonald's is more convenient, I'm going to go to a five-star restaurant because I want to live a healthier lifestyle. And I know the nutrients and the foods that are at the five-star restaurant are going to be more conducive to a healthy lifestyle than eating at McDonald's. Even though they both satisfy my hunger, one, I'm if I'm at a place where I want to be healthy, is going to hurt my health right? In the process of feeding my starvation, one is going to help my health in the process of feeding my starvation. So in one, I'm satisfying my short-term goals, right? 
In the other one, I'm satisfying my long-term goals, which is love and happiness and connection and a bond, right? And so that's what these all kind of represent in the analogy. Now, I know ju just like with any statement or opinion or, you know, theory, of course, not everything is going to apply to everyone. So, of course, in the analogy, I say majority of men might choose McDonald's just for the simple aspect of convenience. But we know that depending on the mindset of the man, he might choose a five-star restaurant. He might choose something in between the McDonald's and the five-star restaurant. Like I said, the purpose of the analogy is just meant to be simplistic. But we can see here, when broken down, how the analogy is meant to represent the thought process of a man.